Actually, hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here live at PlayStation Experience in lovely Anaheim, California. Really fun time here. Big show this weekend. Tons to see and do on the show floor. Big panels coming up. But I've been looking forward to this next segment for some time. So this is... Uh, well, it's High Wire Interactive. I mean, uh, who, who, what you guys need no introduction. <laughs> We've got, uh, I mean, these, you guys are incredible. You guys have been working, uh, you know, some industry legends here. And you guys have been working on Golem. We have, yeah. That's right. Not Gollum. No. no. Not Gollum. Oh, no. Golem. Go, 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 go. No, in fact, uh, <laughs> sh so we announced at PSX 2015. Yes, you did. And yeah. um, within uh, hours, the, um, the Lord of the Rings guys reached out and said, this isn't Gollum like our Gollum. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. please, no. It's Important to clarify that, yeah. you know, because it's, uh, it, we, we need to be clear about these things. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, we haven't heard from, from Gollum in a while. You guys have been hard at work getting the game polished up. Yeah. Um, how, how was development coming? Where are we at? Uh, it's going well. It's yeah? going well. You know, I think with a small studio, a small game, I, you can, you can overexpose a little bit. So, you know, we announced the game, people were excited about it, and, um, and we just put our heads down and kept working on it. But yeah. now that we're getting closer to being done, we're starting to Oh, I'm excited. So, more. And I think we're going to get a new look at some footage here, which I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, now, this is a game with an interesting concept. So maybe maybe it's worth just kind of reintroducing and, and just setting up kind of this universe and what players are going to do in it. Sure, yeah. So um, in Golem, you play as Twine, who is um, a young kid who uh, gets into some trouble and actually gets pretty seriously injured mm. and so as you can see um, in our in our demo um, you actually start off in bed and you're you're messed up like you can't walk any, anymore and so um, she discovers that she can uh, kind of send for, forth her, her thoughts and take over these giant stone golems called uh, or stone creatures called golems mm -hmm. and um, use those to explore the world so we're seeing a little bit of this footage right now. What are we seeing? Yeah, so this is actually right after the accident that um, where you get injured. Um, and uh, your father, uh, whose name is Scratch, is in the room and is kind Don't of to explaining to you, you know, how he found you and what happened. Um, you've been unconscious for a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Late. So, um, and, you know, this is a, a game. It kind of sounds like it's set almost set in two different worlds in a way. Yeah. It's set in sort of the real world. You know, uh, so with sorry. you as the girl, and then it's also set in this world of being a golem. Yeah. We actually said she's Here. a girl. Well, you know, it's... Or, we try not to... Um, gender is gender non child. The sisters. Yeah. Your older Here sisters. Your okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Got it. You yeah. could be whatever you want. I, I always think of Twine as a girl, but... Um, Twine. Uh, in reality, in VR, that's that's you, right? Yeah. So we don't do anything that's kind of kind of break that suspense. Yeah, it's like that empty vessel approach, the Gordon Freeman approach, the you know, kind of like just don't don't go there and yeah. kind of just dump yourself into the vessel, right? Well, Jamie, like something idea. I love, like we were talking about before we came out here, is you know, especially in VR, but so much of uh, video games, we we use video games to explore other worlds and try out other characters and try out other you know environments, mm. and so it seems really natural inspiration to take that and put it into a VR world. Yeah, we when you know when we first started on Golem, it was um, it was right at the very beginning of when VR was. Um, coming about and uh, what we really loved about VR was how it just immersed you in this other other place and we started to play around with how can we um, allow the character in the game to experience the exact same thing that the player is experiencing so in the game she actually puts a, a scarf over her eyes and that's just like the player putting on the headset and it's blue and it's oh, blue. very nice <laughs> perfect um, and she has uh, kind of a, a crystal encrusted rock that um, she looks into to, to control the golem, just like the move controller we, <laughs> that we use. Same He's up. building that brand right Same in the game. I love it. Uh, exactly. Proportions is the our, our marketing guy is going to be happy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so tell me a little bit now. We're sort of exploring the world here. Yeah, so um, Twine has just got her dream stone. That's uh, her in, in the... That's uh, you moving. And, and you, see and you can see it kind of you know it matches your movement, but... Um, the, her first steps into into controlling these golems, she actually um, figures out she can control a doll. So you're maybe six inches tall, and you're walking around in your room, and um, you know objects that would be no obstacle to to a 14 year old, all of a sudden become huge mountains to climb, 
Um, That's cool. Now tell me where you landed on the controls here, because I remember playing a sequence similar to this a couple years ago on an earlier build of the game, and it, it involved sort of leaning forward a little bit with the PlayStation VR headset on. So tell me where you landed. Yeah, sure. So um, we uh, we appreciate a, that VR lets you feel like you're in another place. Um, and a lot of, you, of games do a really good job of setting that up, and then you're moving your thumbs, right? <laughs> uh, or, or you're... Not that there's anything wrong. Thumbs are great. <laughs> Look, they're indispensable digits. We can yeah. all agree with that. And so as soon as you get into that mode, you yeah. just kind of sit back, and you're not moving your head around, and yeah. you don't really feel like you're there anymore. Uh -huh. And so we spent a lot of time um, looking into uh, how you know, people move, right? And if you are uh, standing up and you want to take a step forward, the first thing you do is actually you lean your head forward slightly. So in the game, um, you pull the trigger to let the game know you're ready to move. You move forward slightly, and your character starts smoothly walking. That's cool, yeah. And it's um, it's very intuitive. Um, so we had the demo on the floor. Uh, yeah, so dolls are also You have also a bug phobia. You might not like attacks. that. <laughs> Interesting. We have the demo on the floor. And, um, oh, it's playable here at PlayStation Experience. It is, Experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. We've got two stations running, and um, people played it all day. They seem to really enjoy That's it. That's great. That's great. And one thing I'm, I'm going to jump in here is Please. pulling the trigger yeah. to move. That was something I, I, I didn't really tell Jamie that I needed it, but like, I always enjoyed being able to lean to move, but then every once in a while I just wanted to not move anymore and just look around and yep. just sort of get my bearings again. So he says, all right, I'll let you just have a trigger to pull, and you yeah. don't lean to move until you pull the trigger. So you can just decide, I'm just gonna stand here and look around. And then when you pull the trigger, you you know you're, it's time to start leaning yeah. and moving. And everybody liked it so much, we just made it the default. That's great, I, and I love, Jamie, I love you, because you have just such an experienced hand with mechanics, you know? Yeah. You're Mr. 30 Seconds of Fun, you've worked on some classic games. And uh, I, I gotta break away from that, though, and remark on what we're seeing here, because uh, this is like a great look at, at, at Golem. So tell me, tell me what we're seeing. Yeah, so this is much later in the game. This is after you get your big fella Golem. Um, you start exploring this very large city. It's kind of an open world city, so there's lots of different directions to go, lots of nooks and crannies to explore. But you run into these guys, the Silent Watch, um, these enemy golems that are gonna try to stop you from what you're doing. So this is actually the, the training. So you see the kind of blue crystal sword that shows up. That's indicating to you like where you need to put your hands to block. We found a lot of people when they first started, they're playing it like a regular couch game, right? And they're just kind of going like this. And if you want to block a sword that's coming in, you have to get your hand way up here. Above your <laughs> skull. Yeah, so, so we really, um, you know, we it, we had to try a lot of things to get people to, to play the game as if it was real. Yeah, and, this, and what I love about it is that for the first time in a game, any game I've played, the sword control is absolutely one-to-one. -one. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's, you're not pushing button combos. Yeah. To get cool swirly things. That's you're fun actually too. Like, but I have to yeah. put my sword above my head to protect myself. And you, you almost of... feel like you almost feel like you almost feel the impact of what yeah. you're hitting it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, Jamie. I mean, you just have this background with mechanics, and uh, and I, I, that's why I've been so eager to see this game because I know that you've 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 had such a huge mark on the FPS genre. You were you were involved with Infamous Second Son. Yeah. You've been involved with a lot of great games over the years. Thank you. So tell me what you've been learning about VR as you make Golem. Oh boy, um, I mean that's I, a big topic. I, yeah. How, How long we got, got here? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the the biggest thing that we learned is that you have to simplify and you have to strip down and you have to have um, kind of a very core, clear experience. Like I've worked on games that where there's an entire city and the world is at risk and everything is exploding. And in VR, that's just kind of overwhelming and, and doesn't work. It's like noise almost. Exactly. We had a whole galaxy at one point. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Marty and I have, have threatened the galaxy so often that we decided for Golem, we're gonna bring it down. You know, it's gonna be a small family. It's gonna be one one main character. Like, the there are stakes, but it's not, the world is gonna end. Um, and in VR, that just works so well because you're making eye contact with, with your father. By the way, this is no longer the tutorial. So yeah. This guy, he doesn't tell you what, where to put the sword. Oh anymore. boy. Yeah. You gotta like work. Um, and you guys have a really small team working on this, right? Yeah. It is, yeah. About a dozen guys. Wow. Yeah, up in Seattle. Depending on the week. 
<laughs> now, now tell me, uh, Marty, I mean, you're obviously known for just incredible, you know, musical talent, you. composition. You have your reputation precedes you here. Tell me a little bit about how you're coming at the soundtrack here for Golem. Well, it was really fun. I mean, Jamie uh, got a hold of me right away after I found myself free again uh, and said, hey, let's let's do something that's just, you know, a small team and it has a intimate feel to it. And why don't you go ahead and do a, a prequel soundtrack to this? And I'm like, okay, that sounds great. Awesome. So we did a Kickstarter and... And the music is is really based on this whole philosophy of, of, of a more intimate story, a more personal story. So um, I was able to sort of pare things down. It's not a bunch of bombastic brass and drums. Um, it's a sort of chamber orchestra with harp and piano and, and woodwinds. It's really, it's really a lot of fun for me to write that way. Um, and then with the other fun thing is, now that we only have such a small team, uh, in terms of fulfilling the Kickstarter, that was me. <laughs> so every, just a every few weeks one. ago, I was packaging up uh, vinyl albums and sticking labels on them and everything else. It's, it was it's fun. good to stay busy. It's it good is. To keep your I got to do busy, something. You know? yeah. Exactly. This guy's debut game coming out of Highwire. Yes, Wire. it is. Yeah, and that's a, that's a huge deal. Yeah. And well, just shipping, no pressure. Shipping right? is, you know, it's really important not to just start a company, but ship a product. So yeah. we're really looking forward to shipping this. Yeah. So what's the feedback been from folks who've been playing this thing? Really good, really yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, the first large-scale play test that we've gotten to do. So <laughs> um, I, was, I admit I was a little bit nervous coming in, and it's, 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 I think it's a very intuitive control scheme, but it's also, um, like, <laughs> we have these instruction cards for, like, how to play the game, and it's like, uh, pull the trigger and then you'll figure it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> like, there's no way to explain it. And so I was a little bit nervous, but we haven't had any problems. Everybody's been going through it. And um, it's 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 so effortless that, like every good control scheme, it just sort of dissolves away. Yeah. You don't have to think about it anymore. You're just in the world and you're you're in the action. Now, now taking a look at the game where it is now and comparing it to where you were, you know, two years or so ago when, like, PlayStation VR hadn't even launched yet. Yeah. Like, wh wh where's your head at there? I mean, it seems like it's maybe shifted a bit since then. Yeah, you know, um, I we did a pretty good job of... Um, planning initially and scoping initially, but it's totally uncharted territory. Oh, for sure. Right? I mean, you think something's going to work, and then you try it, and then it doesn't. You have to yep. adapt and work your way through. Yep. So I think story-wise and kind of um, with this large-scale city environment that you're exploring, that hasn't changed as much, and it's good because it took us almost two years to build the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, the mechanic mechanically and especially the VR stuff as, you know, I think we've kind of And the, the thing I, I'm en I, I really enjoyed is we had this – what what seemed like a very, you know, simple story, and it would be simple just to you know, like it wouldn't be hard to write and and to produce, uh, and but producing cinematics in VR is an entirely different thing. Totally. And different. we just learned as we went, and we had some great performance capture work done by MoCap Now in Seattle, and some really good actors who were super willing to just experiment with us. Yeah. <laughs> so we did a lot of things that might not seem spectacular but to me i know how spectacular they are like making you feel like you're in a, a wagon that's being drawn by a horse that's moving and two actors who are with you in it and they're talking back and forth and you can just look at anything you want to look at it's like yeah yeah you do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard to do yeah. and uh so but we don't want the player to feel like it's anything other than just totally natural and this is what it should be and so, uh, what, but it is really amazing when you have characters that look at you as they're talking, and then as you, you, you can do this kind of thing, and they just follow you. They look, their eyes track your eyes, and you don't realize it, but that's really powerful stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, and once again, it's so intimate. Mm hmm you know, giant space battles are not needed to make you feel like <laughs> something's happening pretty cool. So, uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm having a blast. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay. Well, thank you for the fresh new look at Golem. Do we know when this one's coming out? Yeah, we're excited to tell you that it's coming out on March 13th. <laughs> oh, 18. you have a date wow. and everything. Yes. That's yeah. an announcement. Yeah. You yeah. are announcing an announcement. March 13th. Yeah. We are coming to PlayStation VR. Planting a flag. I love you know, it. <laughs> nobody's getting tattoos. Okay. <laughs> tattoos, yeah. But, uh, what? Uh, Peter told me he was getting a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the new look at Golem. We've got a lot more coming here today, so stay with us.